friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams again. Today is my January book haul. And like I said in my last book haul that was my final book haul from 2019, moving forward, at least for the next few months, my book hauls are going to be much, much smaller. I am currently in the beginning stages, quarter, I have actually passed the first quarter of a 100 day no spend challenge that I've given myself to start off 2020. Uh, so I have just a few caveats to that no spend challenge. I'm still gonna participate in my book of the month subscription. If there's a library sale, I can spend a very limited amount. Um, I'm not allowed to shop the shelves at the library on a consistent basis, but if there's one of their big annual sales, I can shop that with a much smaller uh, amount than normal. And the other caveats have nothing to do with books. But today I have only seven books to show you. One was sent to me, two are from Book of the Month, and four are from a library book sale. And if you watched my weekend reading vlog from a couple weeks ago, you will have already seen those four anyways. But first of all, let me tell you about the two books I chose for Book of the Month. The first one I chose is Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. This sounds like such a strange story, but I have been hearing and reading people's captions on Instagram who've been reading this and absolutely loving it and really liking the writing. Instead of trying to summarize what this is about, I'm actually gonna read the description because it just sounds so cool. It takes place in Victorian London. We follow Bridie Devine, who's a flame-haired, pipe-smoking detective extraordinaire. Um, she's confronted with her most baffling puzzle yet, the kidnapping of Christabel Berwick, the secret daughter of Sir Edmund Ethel Athelstan Berwick, a peculiar child whose reputed powers have captured the unwanted attention of collectors in this age of discovery. Winding her way through the sooty streets of Victorian London, Bridie won't rest until she finds the young girl, even if it means unearthing secrets about her own past that she'd rather keep buried. Luckily, her search is aided by an enchanting cast of characters, including a seven-foot-tall housemaid, a melancholic tattoo-covered ghost, and an avuncular apothecary. But secrets abound in this foggy underworld where nothing is quite what it seems. Blending darkness and light, Things in Jars is a mesmerizing novel that collapses the boundary between fact and fairy tale to stunning effect and explores what it means to be human in inhumane times. Ah, oh, that sounds so good. It sounds so strange, but I love that there's a little mystery aspect to it. I'm kind of curious about this mermaid, which wraps around to the back of the book. Um, I'm, a, I'm curious about this young girl who has some powers. Um, yeah, it just sounds like it will be strange and wonderful. So, so far I've heard really good things about it and I had to pick this for my book of the month this month. I also chose a book off their YA shelf and that is Song of the Crimson Flower by Julie C. Dow. I did have a credit for this. One of you used my link down below to sign up for book of the month and so I was able to get an extra credit which is why I um, picked this one. And this one has a fairy tale feel to it. It says, will love break the spell? After cruelly rejecting Bao, the poor physician's assistant who loves her, Lan, a wealthy nobleman's daughter, regrets her actions. So when she finds Bao's prized flute floating in his boat near her house, she takes it into her care, not knowing that his soul has been trapped inside of it by an evil witch who cursed Bao, telling him that only love will set him free. Though Bao now despises her, Lan vows to make amends and help break the spell. Together, the two travel across the continent, finding themselves in the presence of greatness in the forms of the Great Forest Empress Jade and Commander Wei. They journey with Wei, getting tangled into, in the webs of war, blood magic, and romance along the way. Will Lan and Bao begin to break the spell that's been placed upon them, or will they be doomed to live out their lives with black magic running through their veins? In this fantastical tale of darkness and love, some magical bonds are stronger than blood. I'm really excited to read this. I love the Asian influence combined with this fairy tale feel. I think that this is gonna be really lovely and I'm super excited that I chose this as well to add on to my book of the month. The four books that I picked from the library sale, um, I'm really excited about this middle grade. I heard about this first on the Mock Newberry group that I'm a part of it on Goodreads. This is Planet Earth is Blue by Nicole Pantelikos. 
And I love middle grade books that deal with space. And I think this one also talks about grief. I feel like I've read other middle grade books where grief and space are kind of intertwined in the book. And that's what this one is about. We follow 12 year old Nova, who's awaiting the launch of the spaceship Challenger. Um, she and her sister, her older sister Bridget, love astronomy and they've planned to watch the launch together, but Bridget has disappeared and now Nova is in a new foster home. Nova is autistic. Speaking is hard for her. Teachers and foster families have always believed that she isn't as smart as other kids. Only Bridget knows how wrong they were. But now, as the liftoff draws closer, others begin to see how intelligent Nova is, and every day she's counting down to the launch and to the moment when she'll see Bridget again. Ugh, I'm so excited. Deals with grief, has a space element, and uh, an autistic 12 year old. I am really excited about this one. I feel like it's gonna be really good and I've heard from that Newbury potential mock Newbury group that this was really well loved middle grade this year. I picked up two nonfiction at this book sale. Um, I grabbed the Essential Enneagram, the Definitive Personality Test and Self Discovery Guide just because I want to continue to understand the Enneagram more and I've only read just a very few things about it but this is a really tiny little book and um, interested in reading more about it and then the happiness project by Gretchen Rubin I'm I made it halfway through better than before which is Gretchen Rubin's book about habits and building and developing habits and why and how and personality is plays a big part of it this one is um, she took kind of a year well the tagline the subtitle says or why I spent a year trying to sing in the morning clean my closets fright fight right, read Aristotle, and generally have more fun. Um, so I think she took a year and each month focused on different areas of her own personal happiness and gave herself little challenges to do to build happiness into her life. And I am down for all of that. I love challenges and talking about like kind of monthly challenges. And I think happiness is a choice that we can make d despite our circumstances sometimes. Uh, it might not always be easy, but I'm, I'm really excited to kind of dive into this and see what she has to say about her happiness project. And then finally, I picked up um, from that book sale, Pam Jenoff's the, the Last Summer at Chesil Beach. And Pam Jenoff wrote The Orphan's Tale and other books that I own but haven't yet read. And this is yet one more. It takes place in the summer of 1941. Young Adelia Montf Montfort. Montefort. I'm sure that that's a French word that I can't say. Or Italian. Flees fascist Italy for America, where she is whisked away to the shore by her well-meaning aunt and uncle. Here she meets and falls for Charlie Connolly, the, old, the eldest of the four Irish Catholic boys next door. But all hopes for a future together are soon throttled by the war and a tragedy that hits much closer to home. Grief-stricken, Addie flees first to Washington and then to war-torn London and finds a position at a prestigious newspaper as well as a chance to redeem lost time, lost family, and lost love. But the past always nips at her heels, demanding to be reckoned with, and in a final fateful choice, Addie discovers that the way home may be a path she never suspected. I'm kind of excited that this doesn't have dual timelines. I feel like all the historical fiction that I've been reading lately has dual timelines, and while I love that, I'm kind of excited for just a one-off story where we just follow this one girl and her love and lost love in wartime. So, yay, I need to read some Pam Genoff this year. The last book that I'm going to talk to you about, I'm really excited about because it came in this really cool package and it came from the UK. Oh, let me show it to you. Let me take, slide that off. Dun, 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 dun. This is how it looks inside. Reader of Magic. Look, at it's sealed. I don't know that I've ever gotten a sealed, oh, and it smells really strong. Whoa. Love. This is gonna be a middle grade. They did reach out to me and ask if I would be willing to receive this. And I said, of course. Oh, fun, break that seal. Thank you. I hope that you enjoy Smell Home. I don't know if I'm saying that right, Smell Home. There is a book here. Wrapped up, let's see this book together. Oh goodness. Oh my. First thing that fell right out. Oh, fun. A little pin that says Reader of Magic. Hopefully you can see that. Reader of Magic. A 
gorgeous bookmark that just says Believer. Very nice. Some prints, I'm assuming, from things in the books. We have this young girl reaching out. What should I call it, I wonder, for every good place has a name. A small home, I say to myself, after the tower itself. The smallest of homes in the most ordinary of places. My secret, a big secret of the smallest kind. We have this bunny. For a quag bargain is always kept. I'm sure these are quotes. And then this mysterious space face. <laughs> What stares back at me is a limitless blanket of black, punctuated only with the light of the moon and stars. Very cool. Little cards there. And then this is the book. Oh, this is lovely. It's a printed hardcover, so no dust jacket. Gorgeous cover, written by C.L. Williams. I'm assuming that's Claire, who wrote this card. And this is the description on the back. This is lovely. Shh, can you keep a secret? In wild medieval Britain, I love that it's set in medieval times. In wild medieval Britain, 13-year-old Wynne Hopringle has a big secret of the smallest kind. She has discovered a miniature village hidden close to her family home of Smailholm Tower. When tales of merciless border raiders reach the small folk, they realize they are in danger and must seek a cure to their strange predicament. Can Wynne help her tiny friends, or will the scheming King Quag have other ideas? Heroes, it seems, come in all sizes. Yay. A bit of a fairy tale of a young girl who finds this village of tiny people near her home. Oh man, this sounds so magical and so fun and it has gorgeous end papers. This is a beautiful book. Oh, and it's signed. Fun. Oh, and is there a map? guys. And there's a map. <laughs> yes. I love a book with a map. Listen to this dis dedication as well. For those who seek adventure away from this place, let it be so always. Remember though to look behind you from whence you came, lest you forget what you might have had if you had stayed or turned in another direction. Ooh, good dedication. Yeah, I'm really excited about this gorgeous copy of this book. A few more things about this book. It does come out at the end of January, the 28th, I believe, in just a couple days. Um, I will put a link down below where you can order this book. There is also going to be an audiobook of Smell Home, which is read by Rosie Jones, who had a brief appearance on Downton Abbey, which is really cool. Uh, so I, if you're an audiobook listener, that might be a way that you would be interested in reading this middle grade fantasy. I'm super excited to read this book. Thank you so much to Matador and Paper Charm for letting me unbox it on my channel and share it with you because I think that it is going to be fabulous. I'm so excited to read it. Well, that is my little mini book haul for the month. I just have these seven books. I'm really excited about them, in particular this middle grade, because you know I love some middle grade. And actually this middle grade too, where is it? There it is, Planet Earth is Blue. Yeah, I'm really excited about all these actually. Not sure when I'll get to them. Hopefully I will get to most of them or some of them soon. I would love to chat with you down in the comments below. I love chatting with you down there. Let me know about these books or what is a book that you acquired in January that you're super excited about. I will also put the link for information about ordering Smail Home if that's something you're interested in. And that is it for today. I love chatting with you in the comments. As always, give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the little bell so you know when I have a new video coming out. And I will be chatting with you in another video very soon. Bye.